who it is. If you were looking at this face and listening to this voice, you would tune in to the best kept secret in sports talk. I'm your friendly neighborhood smoke, and you are officially on the hot seat. We're going to do things a little different this afternoon. Um, so, the NBA season is over with. Congrats to the Los Angeles Lakers for winning their 17th uh, NBA championship in franchise history. Uh, big shout out to uh, LeBron and AD. Um, when the season started, I did a preview show and I picked the Lakers to win. I'm sorry, I picked the Clippers to win. Thought the Clippers were going to win it all. But um, when the season was suspended and when they reconvened in the bubble, I, I said then the Lakers were going to win. I didn't think it was going to be close regardless of who you put in front of them. And here we are. Those guys look great down the stretch. Um, AD ain't from this planet. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where that motherfucker's from. Um, so season's over with, and um, I had an idea, and I was super, super excited about it. I was going to have a two-part series about I was, and I was going to count down the top ten greatest uh, players in the NBA history, and I had devised a um, a system to where I had four pieces of criteria, and I was going to rake those ten players in all four pieces of the of those of that criteria, and uh, I was going to get a composite score, and the composite score was going to rank them on its own. And what that did is it was going to remove bias, right? So I, I did a lot of research, man. Uh, it took me about two to three days to finish. And uh, I, was, I was excited, right? Every time I got on social media, every time I turned on the TV, no matter uh, what sports publication I frequent, the same goddamn conversation was being had. And I didn't understand why. This conversation was, Who's truly the GOAT, LeBron James or Michael Jordan? I'm thinking to myself, shit, we still talking about this? The last dance didn't do his job? Y'all didn't watch that shit? For the people who are prisoners of the moment, like, why are we still having this conversation? The last dance, y'all didn't see that? I said, okay, well, things have changed since the last dance, right? LeBron got another ring. Uh, LeBron got another NBA Finals MVP, so... Probably time to rehash some old, old arguments and probably time to, to, to spark this thing up again, right? Nah, I didn't see it. So I continued to press on and I continued to uh, prepare for that, uh, that two-part series. The conversation didn't waver. So I felt, you know what? I think it's time we have a conversation. I think it's time I do my part to put this shit to bed, at least right now. You can probably look over my left shoulder and see which way I'm going. And it's for good reason. Now, before I get started, let me say this. If you are a subscriber of this channel, if you're a fan of this channel and you've seen previous shows, one thing I pride myself on and I think my work speaks for itself is I do a great job of being unbiased. Regardless of what favorite sports team of mine I'm discussing or what, regardless of what favorite player of mine I'm, I'm, I'm having a conversation about with you all, I just go by what I see. Right, I don't play favoritism. I don't put my foot on the on the brakes for no goddamn body. It's all gas over here, and I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel based off what I've gathered. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. So understanding, I'm coming from a place of being unbiased. That shouldn't uh, my adulation for Mike isn't going to skew my argument. So. Without any further ado, ding, ding, class is in session. Um, listen, <laughs> as I was getting ready for this show, and I was like, you know what, I can just go ahead and wing this shit. I don't need to look up anything. I don't need to do any type of research. I said, you know what, uh, let me be fair. Let me be fair. Look, at, I mean, I'm talking about looking at advanced metrics, doing some reading, having conversation with people who I respect as it relates to sports. Uh, just making sure I'm gathering all the information from the other side that I possibly can. Y'all tripping. Y'all, as a matter of fact, y'all done tripped and fell. This motherfucker is the greatest goddamn basketball player to ever lace him up. And I don't see, you know what? What I One thing I think I, I've come to grips with is this. The area in which I come from plays a big part in this, right? So let me break down what I mean when I say that. When I was coming up, it was one thing that mattered above all else. One thing. 
winning. Winning matters more than any goddamn thing. That was the barometer in which you were measured. How much you won. Not how much you got to the finals, but more so what you did when you got there. That's what mattered. Getting there was important because, God damn it, you have to win. You have to get there in order to win, right? So I'm not saying getting there is easy. But nobody cared about that shit once you got there. What happened when you got there? So understanding that I hold winning at such a high rate, it's not the only piece of criteria that matters. I'm telling you it matters a lot. This also speaks to how good and how great LeBron James really is. Because over the course of the last 12 to 15 years, LeBron James is so goddamn good that he's made losing acceptable. Let that shit sink in. LeBron James is so good, he's made losing acceptable. My proof in all of this is too many people are siding with LeBron James as the greatest basketball player of all time and ignoring the fact that he's lost more than he's won. Well, back where I come from, you can't even be a part of the goddamn conversation because you've lost so much. And one thing about LeBron James is I don't know any superstar in NBA history that has had that much help and has lost this much. I don't give a good goddamn you want to even take away his first finals, right? He had no business being there. Fine, whatever. Still four and five. And you're talking about a cat who has changed the entire landscape of the uh, of, of the NBA. He didn't create super teams in this era. That goes to Danny Ainge. But what he did do, and I salute him for this, is he put the power in the players' hands. He made creating super teams popular. He made it the thing to do. No matter where he's gone since he left Cleveland the first time. Each stop, he was with a top 15 talent. Each stop, he was cerebral about where he was going. I can appreciate that as well. Here's the thing about that. When you have that much goddamn help, there are no excuses. When you have that much help and you claim to be as great as everybody, as you say you are, when you claim to be, when, when everybody says you are the great, uh, well, you are the GOAT or the best player in the league, ain't no more motherfucking excuses. Nobody want to hear that shit. When Zeke hurt his ankle against the Lakers, nobody talks about that when you talk about the Lakers beating the Pistons. What was that? Um, 88? 89, whatever series, whatever year that was. Um, when you talk about in 91, when the Lakers didn't have James Worthy, Worthy for a good part of their finals against the Bulls, nobody talks about that shit. Who won, who lost? Because when you get that far, there are no more excuses. There ain't none. When you talk about his performance in the finals, <laughs> It's getting a little tricky. I mean, you're talking about a cat who's been to the finals 10 times. His record in those finals, or as it relates to series, is 4 and 6. Game by game, it's he's 22 and 33. That puts him at 40% winning percentage. He's been swept twice. He's been a part of a gentleman sweep twice. Gentleman sweep, for those of you who don't know, is losing 4-1. Played a four games, played a seven game series, lost in five games because you only won once. I've seen him get blown out in the NBA Finals games more than once. I've seen him quit NBA Finals games. Yeah. Quit. Can't say that about him. Can't say that about him. I haven't seen him quit. I haven't seen him lose a series. And I'm trying my damnness right now as I'm speaking to you all to think of a time in which he was blown the fuck out. Right? Like, when did a team Michael Jordan played on in the finals didn't look competitive? Not saying it hasn't happened, but I can't remember. I don't I don't remember the Jazz blowing out the Bulls. I don't remember the Sonics doing it. The Suns, uh, the Blazers, the Lakers. I say it didn't happen. I'm just saying I don't fucking remember it, right? Um, Jordan in these same types of games is 24 and 11. That's almost a 70% winning percentage. 70%, 40%. 
then you take into account how good Michael Jordan looked, pause, in those games. You take into account how bad you've seen LeBron James looks, and not just games, but hell, an entire series. I'm not going to say he quit against um, the, the Dallas Mavericks, but he down sure wasn't there and accounted for. He shrunk. Here you are. You've turned the NBA upside down. Probably as it relates to just what Vegas odds. Probably some of the most lopsided um, uh, uh, favorite versus underdogs I've seen. There is no reason why Dallas should have won that series. There's no reason why Miami shouldn't have won in five games. What was that, game four? When it, like, it, everything just went downhill. He shrunk. He disappeared. MVP, best player in the league, two top ten, two top 15 talents, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, you shrink, you lose. Explain that to me. Anybody, I dare you. Explain that to me. I ain't forgot about that. I'm not going to let your ass forget about it either. So let's not spend all the time talking about um, LeBron James' failures, right? Let's spend some of the time talking about some of the things he has done. Probably the most impressive thing he's done in these finals when he's been there is what he did with the Warriors, right? I'm not going to mention what, what Stephen they call it, the uh, stimulus package. Not going to mention that. Bottom line is 73 and 19. If you remember seeing that Warriors team during the uh, regular season, they looked unbeatable. I mean, shit, they were 73 and 9, but they looked unbeatable. He came back down from 3 1 and he won. And God damn it, he looked impressive doing it. Um, that was impressive. People use that argument to say LeBron James beat an all-time great team. Jordan never did. You want to know why? He never gave any of those teams the opportunity to be great. That's why. That was an all-time NBA great team on LeBron's watch. Once Mike started winning, there were no all-time great teams. They were the team. So I have a question for you. Which one is more important, beating the unbeatable team or being the unbeatable team? Year after year after year after year after year after year. Which one is more impressive to you? Not to take anything away from the young man. Well, he ain't young. He's probably he almost my age. And I'm getting old. Anyway, when you look at what he did against the Warriors, I'm not taking nothing away from him. That was impressive. Circumstances or not, that was impressive. But I, you got to think about that now. Is beating that team more impressive than losing to that team three three other times? It's beating the unbeatable team that impressive as if, than, than him losing to that other team. One thing about, and I think Chris, Chris Broussard said it in these words, and I quote, when Jordan was winning, nobody else ate. Well, here's the thing about LeBron James. Everybody who he's beaten in the NBA Finals, with the exception of Jimmy Butler, has come right back and beat him. And you can't give me the argument of the, the, teams he, the, 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 the type of talent he faced, the teams he faced were unbeatable. You're talking about those Warriors teams, and I get it. Understand this. The Warriors team was his creation. How? You, that, you, that shit sounds asinine to you? I'll explain it to you. LeBron James went from one super team in Miami and went to another one in Golden State. I'm sorry, another one in Cleveland. Uh, Kyrie Irving was an all-star game MVP when he got there. If you look at um, what was going on that season, Kevin Love was the best power forward in the NBA, right? That was a super team. It seems as if he sets himself up very well to have as much help as he needs to continue to win. That's smart. He's a very cerebral thinker. Not taking that away from him. I actually applaud that. Well, LeBron, if you keep going around creating super team after super team, what the fuck do you think the rest of the league is going to end up doing? the monster he created ended up biting him in the ass. Somebody turned around 
and did the exact same thing he did. And he paid for it. Kevin Durant does not go to Golden State if LeBron doesn't go to Miami. The landscape of basketball changed when he did that. He not only did it once, this motherfucker did it twice. And it paid off because he won, right? So if, if, if you win, that makes the, 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 the ends justify the means, right? But when people get to talking about those Warriors teams and they act like as if Kevin Durant's two rings, and I'm getting off topic here, but I'll get back on here in a second. People act as if LeBron, I'm sorry, Kevin Durant's two rings don't matter. Then some of the rings LeBron got don't matter either. Because regardless of how hard it may have been for him to win those rings, right, regardless of the losses he had along the way, he still got them. And he still got them with the elite basketball teams. You want to talk about how Kevin Durant got to the Warriors. Uh, he went to a 7-3 and 9 win team. Who gives a shit? Who talks about, if you go to the club, who talks about how you get to the club? They just talk about you being at the goddamn club. I'm not, I'm not finna play that goddamn game with y'all. I'm looking at what I see in front of me. His own, his own creation end up fucking him in the process. Again, he doesn't have to worry about those Warriors team with a Kevin Durant if he doesn't create what he did in Miami all those years prior to. The league was going to catch up with him eventually. Nobody was just going to sit around, spinning on their thumbs, allowing him to ramrod the league, knowing that he was already the greatest player in the game at that point and having elite help with him along the way. Somebody was going to catch up eventually. So I really don't want to hear you whining about him running into a fucking bus off Golden State. Created that monster. Deal with it. Back to Mike. You look at the 60 plus win teams he faced and beat. You say he didn't beat any great teams. None of those teams had the opportunity to be great. They kept running into the wrong motherfucker. And some of these goddamn teams were loaded. Those Knicks teams, loaded. That Indiana Pacer team in 98 was a really, really good team. Y'all forget the Pacer, the, 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 the Piston team he beat in 91. Listen, man, that team wasn't over the hill. Isaiah Thomas and, and Joe Dumars hadn't even hit 30 yet. That team was still goddamn good. That 91 team was just obsessed with winning. You look at what he went in the finals against. Clyde Drexler. Uh, Charles Barkley, 93 NBA MVP. That Suns team was fucking loaded. He beat Magic Johnson head to head. Take two, you take a year and a half off, come back. You beat a 60 win Orlando Magic team. Shaq and Penny, who was owning the league at that point. You proceed to go to the finals. You place the team. What? The Sonics won like 66 games or some shit that year. You know? And you don't remember it because shit, before you knew it, Chicago was up 3 0 in that series. You come back and next two years, you beat. Two of the most well-coached teams I've ever seen. When you look at uh, those Utah teams with Stockton Malone and Jerry Sloan, uh, God bless the dead. None of those teams were great. Mike wouldn't allow them to be great. The list of people Michael Jordan has beaten. You know what? Let me go this route. The list of people Michael Jordan kept from winning championships is more impressive than the list of people LeBron James beat to win championships. You ain't got to rewind this. I say it for you again. The list of people Michael Jordan kept from winning championships is more impressive than the list of people LeBron James beat to win championships. It's something to be, that speaks volumes. It's something to be said about that. Nobody ate when Mike was on top. Everybody who LeBron James beat to win championships at some point or another turned around and beat him. And you really want to sit and have a conversation about what, who the GOAT is? As, as I keep talking, I almost feel like I'm wasting my goddamn time. I don't understand why we're still having this conversation. And you look at some of the things that separate the two, in my opinion. Uh, Michael Jordan, I think Kevin Durant's the greatest score I've ever seen. But before Durant, it was Michael Jordan, right? Well... On the defensive end, Mike was just as good as he was on the offensive end. LeBron, at one point, was an elite defender. 
He was an elite defender for about five, maybe six seasons. Mike was an elite defender for probably at least ten. He has a defensive player of the year award to prove it. Mike has a defensive player of the year award. LeBron doesn't. Mike has, I think, about nine all defensive team uh, awards. LeBron probably has five. Jordan has more steals per game than uh, LeBron. Jordan actually has more blocks per game than LeBron. W- what are we talking about here? Jordan's probably the greatest two-way player in NBA history. When he went mano a mano with the best at his position, it's very seldom you heard somebody say Jordan got his ass cooked. I saw Kevin Durant go toe-to-toe with LeBron James and tear his ass up. Twice. One finals. He took on the goddamn chain. I saw him picking up LeBron full court. He wasn't bullshitting with LeBron. He bust his ass. He came back the next season and did the same damn thing. (laughs) How many times have you heard somebody say that player religiously, consistently gave Jordan the blues? I'll wait. Me either. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know anybody either. Not saying it ain't happened. I'm just telling your ass I don't remember it, and I have a fairly good memory. Mike being probably the best, the greatest two-way player in NBA history says a lot about not just his determination to win, but here's another thing that separates those two. Him being the greatest two-way player ever says something else that I think LeBron James had to learn how to get to. Michael Jordan is a fucking killer. He's probably the fiercest competitor we've ever seen in this sport. Michael Jordan hated to lose more than he liked to win. LeBron had to learn that. LeBron was almost forced into that because that making the best basketball play bullshit, it's overplayed. When you are who you claim to be, because out of his own mouth, he said he's the GOAT and he said he's the best player in the NBA. He said both of those on separate occasions. Well, when the chips, because think about this. Clutch in the NBA is defined as the last five seconds of a game and overtime. In such games, LeBron James has taken, uh, I think the number is 94 shots. He's made 19 of them. People, that's 20 motherfucking percent. Come on now. (laughs) 94 shots. 19 makes. Clutch. 20%. Same scenario. Michael Jordan shoots 50%. Same situations. Clutch. 50%. Jordan's career average, his career field goal average, is 50%. You want to know why that's important? You want to know why that number should resonate with you? It's because that's the same goddamn average he has during the normal parts of the game. It's the same average he has when it matters the most. Jordan performs the same way under pressure, not under pressure. People, come on now. What the fuck are we doing? What are we talking about here? This goes back to my previous point. Just how good LeBron James is. He has made losing fashionable. He has made it okay. He has made it to where people ignore failure. I don't want to be in a sports world where losing is okay. I don't want to be a part of a sports world where getting to the championship game is celebrated. It makes no fucking sense to me. No matter how you slice it, no matter what piece of the pie you want to take out of this, there are very few things you can say LeBron does better than Michael Jordan. Very few things. You lose your rationale because at that point you're all over the place. And if you're going to have this conversation with me, I can't allow you to do that. If we're going to be fair, you have to admit 
not only is LeBron James not the greatest player of all time, he still got a ways to go to get there. He's the greatest player of this era. I have no problem with that. He's a top five NBA player of all time. I have no problem with that. And understanding, I'm not, this isn't a show to shit on LeBron James. I think he's wonderful. I think he's magnificent. I think, again, he is a top five player all time in NBA history. But I told you all, we were going to end up splitting hairs in order to have this conversation. Um, I don't know. Michael Jordan is about as a complete of a player as we've ever seen. Ever. And if you're going to be, even if some people who might have him second, you second to Michael Jordan. God damn it, that ain't nothing to sneeze at. He's chasing the ghost that I don't think he's going to be able to catch. Because although he won the championship this year, the league is going to gear up to where he doesn't win it next year. Doesn't mean he won't. I'm just saying nobody's going to sit around and allow somebody else to win. That's not how this shit goes. Unless, of course, you're Michael Jordan. Nobody could beat him. Nobody. Nobody. You you look at how many championships he'd probably have had he not taken a break. We're probably talking about eight. Folks, like I said before, I don't want to be engaged in a sports world where lo- lo- losing is okay. Um, if a guy is 22 and 33 in the NBA Finals and you're telling me he's better than the guy who's 24 and 11 in the NBA Finals, we got a problem. If a guy who averages 27 points in the NBA Finals, and you're looking at a guy, well, in the playoffs, and you're looking at a guy who averages 33 points in the playoffs, and you're trying to tell me the the, the, the form is better than the latter, we got a problem. And you're telling me a guy who's 4-6 and six in the NBA Finals is better than the guy who's 6-0 and oh in the NBA Finals, well, we got a problem. You're telling me a guy who has four NBA Finals MVP versus a guy who has six, we got a problem. And I'm not the problem. He can be your favorite player. No problem with that. He can be your GOAT, meaning in your area in which your era when you saw when coming up, he was the best player you saw. No problem with that. I'm not I do have a problem with that because I think the term GOAT is thrown around thrown around too loosely. GOAT doesn't stand for greatest of all time right now. That's an acronym I don't want to sit here and figure out. GOAT doesn't stand for greatest of all time for the last 10 years. Oh, that's another acronym not for to figure out. Greatest of all time simply means the greatest of all time. He can be the best person you've seen. Um, I think Roy Jones Jr. is the best boxer I've seen. He's not the greatest boxer of all time. I think the notorious B.I.G. is the greatest rapper I've ever heard. Arguably, he's not the greatest rapper of all time by uh, a lot of people's opinion. I'm cool with you trying to change the narrative <laughs> to suit your point or to or to push your point. You know, when you when you shift it towards the best I've seen, right? I engage in that from time to time, so I get it. But when you talk about the GOAT, again, my opinion here is unbiased. The greatest basketball player of all time is Michael Jeffrey Jordan. This is not a knock on LeBron James. But to me, the conversation needs to, at some point, not even some point right now, the goddamn conversation needs to be put to bed until he continues to improve his resume. Because right now, his resume isn't strong enough. And I'll leave you with this. The fate of humanity is on the line, right? You got one game, one player. Who you choosing? Mr. Make the Right Basketball Play? Or you choosing to kill him. Stop throwing pebbles at the throne. Y'all be good. Edge. My mouth was my edge. <laughs> my rookie year. Uh huh. We were playing the Chicago Bulls, and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. Okay. And we were playing the next exhibition game in some obscure place. And most veterans do not like to play in exhibition games. They want to get to the real thing. I'm a wide-eyed, energetic rookie, and we're playing this exhibition game, and Michael's going through the motion. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, 
can you believe Michael Jordan? The guy everyone's talking about who's supposed to be able to walk on water. You're out here killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. He's <laughs> like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right, Michael. Who do you think you are? <laughs> the great Michael Jordan? That's right, there's a new kid on town, right? Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, I have 10 and he has four points, right? And I'm doing all this talking. He's like, okay. End of the, end of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. <laughs> And I ended up with 12. <laughs> As he's walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful. You never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> <laughs>